Welcome to the Vacation Races and Friends podcast. A podcast about events, travel, and the people who love both. Find more episodes at vacationraces.com. Welcome back to another episode of Vacation Races and Friends podcast. Yep, we've got another race guide for you. And it's our final race guide of the season. We're talking Joshua Tree Half Marathon. This is a unique experience, guys. It's our only nighttime, really full half marathon experience. We have our Zion at night, but this one is just a little bit different. And you want to dig into all the details. The logistics, pretty easy. Basically, we are going to party in the desert the first weekend of November. I have Anna here with me. She is the race director this year of Joshua Tree. Hi. Anna's super excited. And this is going to be great. So, Anna, tell me a little bit just about Joshua Tree as a park. So, Joshua Tree is kind of that desert escape park. Um Obviously, you will see a plethora of Joshua trees. There's these kind of grumbly rock formations. Grumbly. Grumbly is a good word. Grumbly is the word I meant to say, though. Well, they're they're very (laughs) different. Like the rock formations are very bouldery. They're very, it's a climber's paradise, Joshua Tree is. Do you know what I always think about when I go out there? The movie Tremors. Yes, because it's so deserty like that. And just these outcroppings of boulders just out of the blue. Yeah, it's kind of weird. The Joshua Trees, um, it's known for its night sky. Yes. Joshua beautiful Tree. stars. Beautiful That's stars. That's actually, well, one of the reasons why we do this is because of the night sky. We either, our very first year, we tacked it on to the full moon. And it was a great running experience with the full moon out. All the other years, we've had a partial moon or no moon. So you have... One or the other, either a great full moon or the stars. This year, it's going to be the stars. Yeah, which is going to be great because, again, if you search for things about Joshua Tree, you are going to see a lot of night sky photography. Mm -hmm. They have a lot of star parties out in the park and things like that. And Joshua Tree, a pretty young national park as far as it goes, it was a state park originally, and I believe it was the late 1980s that it turned over into the national park system. And so it is very unique. And even we went to Saguaro this year, Anna, and Saguaro is a deserty, prickly park, but this is totally different than that. Totally unique, different type of desert. And from even from where we're from in Southern Utah, completely different desert. Yeah, completely different. And actually in Joshua Tree, there's a place in Joshua Tree where all of the deserts come together, which is a really cool, unique feature of that Joshua Tree area where you've got this overlap of these different kinds of deserts coming together. So Joshua Tree has a lot to offer, and this race is definitely become a fast fan favorite. Yeah. And I don't know, what do you think? Is it because of the nighttime? What do you think it is? I think it's also the ability, the fact that it's later in the year, it's that last hurrah type of party because the weather is still fairly mild. A lot of places by November, it's quite cold. So this is like the last last chance, last ditch effort to go have fun in the desert, and the weather's still pretty good. It's just a fun night atmosphere and uh, people dress up. It's kind of on the tail end of Halloween. So we often see a lot of costumes for for people that come out to run. So it's extra fun. And I don't think it's because the course is easy. We state all of our things. It's definitely (laughs) not our easiest course. This is not our easiest course. So tell me some of the unique features of this course that make it maybe a little more difficult. So there is a significant climb near the beginning of the race that kind of kind of surprises people. Um, we always hear back when people finish the race, like, I did not expect that climb at the beginning. And so prepare yourself for that. I want to say it's about it, six, 700 feet of climbing. Yeah, it starts at about mile two-ish. Yeah. It starts like you kind of bottom out at mile two and you can see this climb. Of course, it's going to be dark. I've, I've run this course in the daylight. I mm-hmm. haven't had the opportunity to do it at nighttime. So I got to see the climb all the way up, but it's just kind of a long, steady yeah. climb. It's not that it's really steep. Yeah, it's just it, prolonged. It's just long. So. Longer and maybe earlier than you would want, but at the same time, you get it out of the way. So yeah. there's a plus to that. And then you've got a downhill finish. Yeah. You got a nice downhill finish because you've got exactly. to lose all that elevation because it's a it's one of those loop courses, which is great. Uh, that makes the logistics really easy here. So yep. other unique factors. So we got the big hill. What yep. else? Another element is the sand. So a lot of the course takes place on dirt roads that are connector roads to the neighboring area of Sunfair, Sunfair Heights, and so on. And so these roads are, they're county and city roads, but they are dirt. Some of them are paved throughout the course, but some of them are dirt. And so depending on 
rainfall for the year, how much use it gets. It could be more churned up. It could be more hard packed. So there's kind of that wild card element to it where you might have deeper sand than you might expect, but it also could be more hard packed and be okay to run on. So we just want to warn you that the fact that there is sand on this course and it's kind of a grittier sand, less fine. And so it can have a tendency to get a few larger pebbles into your sock and be a little bit of an annoyance. So be prepared to, you know, swab out a little bit of sand granules here and there just to keep your run comfortable. Would you suggest gaiters if you were running this? Would you do gaiters? Yeah. If you've got gaiters, I, I recommend it. It's because it's a larger granule, it'll be easier. Gaiters can help keep that out. So if you've got them or it's a pretty inexpensive purchase. If you wanted to get some gators before this race, I think it'd help you in the long run. And I'm just doing a shout out. This isn't a sponsor or anything. <laughs> I use Dirty Girl Gators. If you go to dirtygirlgators.com, don't do dirtygirl.com. That's bad. <laughs> dirtygirlgators.com. They're great. They're less than $20. You can and pick gators up. gators has an I in the word. It does. G-A-I-T-E-R-S. Not like the alligator. <laughs> Not like the alligator. And they go over your shoes and they're great. And that's the brand that I always use. They have fun colors. And it's like you said, it's inexpensive yeah. and they work really well. Yep. So, and I, as I've run this course, it for the first like about five or six miles, you are on this dirt, this sandy kind of road. Then on the back side of the course, you get on a little bit of pavement yep. as you're on more of a main road. And then you come back onto some of those dirt roads and things like that. I do feel like the second half, and I hope this doesn't bite me, I feel like the second half is a little more hard packed than the first yes. half. So you're going to see a lot more sand probably in the first half. Yep. Those roads, as you get closer back to circling back to the finish line, they're a little bit more maintained, if you will. So they should be more hard packed. But yeah, you've got this great straightaway stretch in the middle of the course that's all on pavement. Yeah, so it is. you can kind of just tune out and run your race and, you know, pick up your speed and get comfortable with your pace. Yeah, there's a couple of little climbs back there. It, it gains a little bit of elevation on that backside when you're on the pavement. Um, but then it comes really fast downhill back to the finish line. So it is a really straightforward course. If you do have any questions about the course, just reach out. I know our Friends of Vacation Races Facebook page is great for people who have run it before and they ask questions and get suggestions from other runners. Um, we don't want to mince words. It's a hard course. It's, it's a tough course. So yep. be prepared for it. Yep. For over 40 years, Nathan has provided best-in-class running essentials designed to help runners enhance and improve their performance mile after mile and year after year. From our hydration vests and handhelds to our safety gear and apparel, Nathan products deliver on what matters most to you. Intuitive design, comfort, quality, and smart storage. Check us out at NathanSports.com or follow at NathanSports Inc. on Instagram. Let's talk about going slow and maybe some course cutoffs because people are always worried about course cutoffs. What's our course cutoff time on this one? So everybody has four hours to complete the race and we are going to start our, our race at six o'clock and send you out in waves at a time. And we're going to break up these waves just maybe three to five minutes in between each other. But what's going to happen is you're going to have a wave. Either you've chosen your pace when you sign up to the race or if you didn't choose a pace, we randomly assigned a wave for you. Keep in mind, these waves are meant to help keep the crowd spread out and help you run with like-minded pace people. And so if, you're, if you've are if got a group of friends and say you're in the green wave and all of your friends ended up in the pink wave, feel free to change waves and run with them. We don't highly police it, but if you have no reason to switch waves, just stick to the one that's assigned. And that's, again, indicated on your bib, just so we can keep the crowds spread out wave by wave. And then once all these waves start is when that course cutoff time will start. Yeah. When you cross the start line mat, that is when your personal time will start clocking. And so everybody will have four hours to complete the race, which equates to about an 18 and a half minute mile. So even if you're walking or doing like a run walk, you should be able to finish this race in plenty of time. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. It's a it's a very conservative um, course limit on that. So everybody yep. should be fine. Another question that I've gotten a lot this year, Anna, is about people who are walking, wanting to start early, wanting to kind of get ahead of that course cutoff. Can you kind of talk through why we're, we don't have an early start for walkers, especially on this course? So this course, well, first of all, this is a large um, participant amount for Joshua Tree. We yeah. have over 3,300 people signed up for this race. So wow. it's one of our largest races that we put on. And so if a walker group were to start, it would just congest the beginning. Um, at the start, you're actually on the shoulder of a road for a, uh, I about want to say quarter, about quarter mile, yeah. a little over a quarter mile before you take a, a hard right onto a road. 
And this is just going to congest things. It's kind of a double track road, so to speak, where it's just a, a width of a car. Yeah, it's not and very so wide. There's not as much room for walkers and nothing against the walkers. But when walkers are going, they tend to walk three to four to five abreast. Sure. So it slows down those who are really gunning for a fast time. So for this race specifically, we are going to ask the walkers to stay in the back, which is the dark green wave. And you'll still have plenty of time to finish. You just won't get that head start like we might allow in a few of our other events. Yeah, that, that I think that's perfect because it does cause a lot of congestion on that first turn yep. where we're, we're kind of. And, and the good thing about the first term is, turn is we are climbing. So everybody's kind of slowed down a little bit. But, you know, one of my favorite things, Anna, about this race is as we're sitting and we've let everybody go from the start line and we see these headlamps that are yes. just running up this hill. That's one of my favorite it. views. It is. It's really, really cool. It, it makes it so unique. And I hope you guys, when you're out there running, you take the time to stop and maybe look back at all those headlamps mm -hmm. and look at the sky because that's why we do it at night yep. is for that experience. So. Yeah, the very first year I was there watching it, I I actually got a little shocked because I had not previously run the course. And I says, oh, wow, seeing the outline of all the headlights, you know, skirting the silhouette of the mountain, that's a little bit steeper hill than I thought it was. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. Prepare for the hill that's early on. It's going to be there a little bit early on. All right. So we've kind of talked through some of these little interesting things about Joshua Tree. Let's go back, Anna, and kind of work through our schedule of events. Okay. This is all taking place in one day on Saturday. Yep. It's kind of unique. You've got a Saturday only. So no Expo Friday. Just keep that in mind. It's all happening Saturday. We will still have an Expo, and that's going to run from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Okay. So on Saturday... 10 to 5. That's bib pickup. That's expo. We're going to have vendors there and everything. Yep. Okay, perfect. So that's going to open at 10. We can't accommodate you guys before 10. Everybody wants to come at 830. We, we're not ready at 830. Yeah, we won't be ready. <laughs> 10 o'clock. Come at 10 o'clock and you can pick up your bibs, get everything you need, and then kind of talk through how the evening's going to work. Because as we get closer in the afternoon, People need to park. People want to get ready for the race because you said the race starts going to be at six o'clock. So Correct. what how do we time this whole expo thing? OK, so keep in mind, as mentioned, um, there are over 3000 runners coming and it's great if you carpool. But because of the nature of this place where we are staging, it's called the Joshua Tree Lake RV and Campground. Um, there's kind of a one way road to get there. There's actually multiple ways, but. Most people are going to come from town or Joshua Tree or Yucca Valley, 29 Palms direction, and you're going to head north up Sunfair Road. And so it's kind of a, a dead end, so to speak, where you're coming to. And so w there will be some traffic jams. That's kind of inevitable. Yeah. But we've got a lot of staff out there on um, on the property to try to get you in multiple entrances to get everybody parked as seamless as possible. So what we're doing is asking everybody to be parked by 4 30 so be okay. parked in the property no later than 4 30 just so that we can make sure the dust is settled everybody's parked because there's still you know any last minute bid pickup that has to happen by five o'clock just getting everybody off the road is going to help us start the race and be more seamless and having getting rid of that danger of cars and runner traffic mixing. Because that's the problem is we where we have to start the race is where the cars are driving in exactly. as well. So we want to make sure that whole area is clear of vehicles so that we can start the race on yep. time. So, so make sure you've, you know, you've eaten some food because the race is about about dinner time and there aren't a ton of options where we're at. We're we're working on getting some some food vendors for this event, but um, it's not solidified yet. So make sure you've eaten something or you have some snacks in the car to get what you need before the race starts, but please plan to be there early. And we always recommend that if you're showing up in the later part of the afternoon for bid pickup, say you're there by 2.30, 3, 3.30, just plan to stay there. It'll, yeah. it'll simplify things. It won't uh, cause extra congestion and traffic. And, you know, if you're about to head out just to grab something to eat, to come back, that's a lot of driving in about an hour's yeah. time. It really is. And that doesn't in account for all the traffic that you're going to run into. Yep. So we need you parked by 430, which means you can't necessarily leave Yucca Valley at four expecting to be parked at 430. Right. Because Yucca Valley is about a 25 minute drive and it's going to take you at least 15 minutes to get parked if you're coming at that later time. So if you're leaving from Yucca Valley, you probably want to leave around 3.30, 3 o'clock mm -hmm. to make sure you get there and you get in and you're parked and you're not stressed. Because I think the most stressed people feel is when they're still in their vehicle 
and, and we're, don't have their bibs. They don't have their bibs, and it's almost race time, and they're freaking out, and mm-hmm. we need to get the race started so we can avoid all of that yep. if we just get there early. So 4.30, we need you parked by 4.30. So I'm going to say, wherever you're coming from, leave by 3.30 to get there in time. Yep. Unless you're coming from like Los Angeles, leave far Definitely earlier leave than that. Early than that. <laughs> Much earlier. And so we'll try to have that bib pickup. It's going to be available for you, but it's only until five. So mm-hmm. if you choose to come later, know that you need to be there by five o'clock. If you're not there, you know, there's a chance that we're not going to be able to get your bibs because we got to get that race started. Yep. So, yep. so yep. just we start packing down the expo and get the race going. So we kind of shift roles from expo to race usually we have an overnight thing to set up and get all that going but it's a quick turnaround so we've got to get things moving that's why we have such a tight timeline for that evening nerding out on data perfecting the optimal training and nutrition plan aiming for progression in prs Sound like you? Well, Gnarly Nutrition can relate. Featuring a full line of honest sports nutrition products, Gnarly provides the best nutrition possible for all types of mountain athletes. Because they offer great tasting and reputable products, Vacation Races trust Gnarly to be the on-course hydration sponsor. With the low-calorie, high-electrolyte Gnarly Hydrate for shorter races and the calorie, electrolyte, and amino acid-filled Gnarly Fuel 2.0 for longer races. Gnarly is here, taking the bonking out of your big day. Use code vacation 15 during checkout at gonarly.com for 15% off. You're going to follow all of our volunteers to help you park and things like that and reduce your stress by coming early. And then we're going to get everybody lined up. Our pacers from Beast Pacing are going to be there Mm -hmm. just like always. And they're going to help us with those waves that you talked about. So the wave is listed on your bib and you're going to get lined up. But before that, we're going to do some raffles. That's right. Raffle tickets. Raffles are back. And I'm so glad, Anna. Yes. Uh, So on your bib, whether you got your bib mailed ahead of time or you pick your bib up at the expo, your bib is going to have some tear off tabs. One of them will have a race shirt. One of them will have a hydro pouch tab if you've selected one during registration. And then lastly, a raffle ticket. And that has a number that matches your bib number. So Colleen will be on the microphone near the expo. Well, between the expo and the finish line staging area, she'll be calling out for raffles. And that's a really tight window, meaning yeah, we gotta give only away half a lot an hour stuff. to give away a lot of prizes. So yeah. that's even more of an incentive to make sure you're parked You've got your raffle ticket turned in and you're ready to go for the race. I love it. So you'll look for me. You'll be able to hear us. Don't worry about that. We'll be taking those raffle tickets. And we usually have some great prizes and they're just going to be coming quick and fast. That night, we also give away a free race entry. I always do that as well. And maybe just to incentivize Anna, I'm going to give the first raffle away as a free race entry. That's a good plan. I'm I'm game with that. I like that. So we're going to give away a free race entry right when raffles start at five o'clock, which means I need your raffle ticket like 445. And then we'll do our raffles and then we'll get us on to this course and get us all started. So yeah, I think that's a good incentive right there. We're, we're dropping you guys a good incentive to be early And once you get in your waves, we'll get you over to the start line. It will be a little bit more of a waved start. Not a lot of time between waves. Everyone is lining up at the same time. There's been sometimes some confusion. Last year, we in earlier in the season, we had some really long breaks between our waves because of COVID-19 protocols. At this point with this race, there's going to be a few minute break in between each wave just to help control traffic. Mm -hmm. But That doesn't mean, oh, I'm in the dark green wave. I don't need to be there until later. Everybody come all at once. You're just, there's a couple minute breaks, but you're all kind of standing in this continuous chute that kind of snakes around the start line, which starts actually just outside of the walls of the property we are staging at, but it's all within walking distance. So you're going to walk maybe a quarter mile from your car to where we're staging and then like another quarter mile to the start line. Yeah. But everybody's kind of be going to be stacked together, starting with the blue wave, which are our front runners and those heading for overall gun time records and uh, master's records. And then going from there with all the rest of the wave colors. Yeah. So it will be if you're competing for age group awards, you're on chip time. So it doesn't matter what wave you start in. It doesn't matter when you start. It's just those overall and master's awards that are given off of gun time. So they need to be in the blue wave. They need to be the first people out on the course so that they can be competing against each other. So pretty straightforward as far as the lineup and everything. 
again, we told you about the raffles. I was just thinking as you were talking about that quarter mile walk and a quarter mile to the start line, I was thinking about the Boston Marathon. The Boston Marathon just happened. Mm -hmm. And if you've ever been to the Boston Marathon, if you've ever had the privilege of going, I am so grateful that I've been able to go and run it three different times. There is over a mile walk between your staging area and where you get to the start line staging area. Oh, man. It is the longest walk I mean, you end up doing like 27, 28 miles when you do the Boston Marathon just because it is so far in between things. It's not going to be like that. We're no, pretty close. It's all with an eye shot. Yeah, we're going to be pretty close. But yeah, if you do some of these bigger, really big marathons, sometimes it can be really, really long. All right. So once we get everybody out there on, our, on course, we are going to have our photographers will be out on course yep. taking some really unique nighttime photos. We're also going to have our RaceJoy app activated. So let's yeah. talk through what RaceJoy is and how we can use it at this event. Okay, so RaceJoy is an app that is um, partnered with Run Sign Up, which is our registration system. They have an app that helps you um, track your run, times you, and there's actually some fun features involved with it. Yeah, there are. And I kind of fill in those fun features with fun facts that you can hear and listen to while you're on your run. So if you're wearing headphones or if you're playing your speaker while your run, while your race joy is working, when you get to different points, it's going to have a little message, a 30 second message that tells you about Joshua Tree, tells you how it became a national park, maybe tells you about some of the local flora and fauna. It tells you um, just some details about the area. So it's a little kind of audio race tour yeah, that you get a, to do. It's a running tour as it you're is. running. It's kind of great. So we love race story. We've really been working hard on it this year. So plan to use that. And it's a great way for your spectators. If your spectators are coming to know where you're at, this is really not a spectator friendly course. No spectators are, wel are welcome to come to the start and finish, which is all that same staging area. But we are going to ask no spectators go on course at all. Yeah, because it's just too hard. The The roads are really narrow mm -hmm. and it would be very dusty. Yeah. Maybe let's talk through dust for just okay. a minute because some people are sensitive to dust and this is a dusty course. We, yep. I mean, it can't not be a dusty course. We're on dirt roads. So yeah. what, do, what do you kind of suggest for that? So we've always recommended if you've got a neck gaiter, now different from your foot gaiter, but a neck gaiter yes. <laughs> or, I mean, even a mask if you wanted to, yeah. uh, although a mask kind of holds things tight to your face, whatever you're comfortable with, um, you might want to wear a neck gaiter just to cover your mouth a little bit when it are when it is those dusty moments, especially yeah. during the start. It could be more congested right. until things start to spread out along the course. Then you can probably put your neck gaiter down or as we approach pavement. But that's always a handy thing to have. You can quickly wrap it around your wrist so it's not around your neck, you know, making you hot unnecessarily. But if it does get a little dusty, you've got something there to protect you and shield you from the dust. What's fueling your race? Is nature powering your run? Nature's Sunshine puts the power of nature into your hands with world-class herbs and supplements, protein powders, and active nutrition formulas designed to keep you healthy for the long haul. With nearly 50 years of expertise and an impeccable reputation for excellence in the natural health industry, we're proud to partner with Vacation Races to offer you 15% off your order. Just use promo code NSPBR at checkout. That's NSPBR. SPVR. Live better, climb higher, dream bigger, dig deeper, and power your game with the power of nature at naturesunshine.com. Generally, this is a tanks and shorts kind of a race. Yeah. Even as we get towards the evening, it doesn't really get too, too cold, it, generally speaking, in this area, but we will have gear check available. Yep. Your check will be available, but also your car is super close. So if you've got everything planned, ready to go, you can just put things in your car, make sure that you're, you know, to the start line area in time to get into your waves and be situated. But we will have gear checked for you so that you've got clothing or extra items waiting for you at the finish. I do want to say, we always say this every year, but we always have mishaps every year where people might have put a hotel key or their yes. phone or something in your gear check. We do not advise with that because things could slip out, phones could get yeah. damaged. So if you've got something highly valuable, we don't advise putting it in your gear check bag. Or something that you really are going to need, like right. car keys. Car keys, yeah. Because we are so good. Our volunteers, our staff, so good at handling these gear check bags. But it's always the one bag that somebody decided to put like their social security card in yeah. or and their it, driver's license. They didn't license. tie it tight enough and it slips yeah. out of the hole as we are 
moving it 10 feet away only right, is all. Right, right. And so just don't do that. Clothing only. Yeah. Clothing only. Now, what if I, what if it is a little chilly, Anna, and I decide to start with maybe something long sleeve or a layer that I don't need after I get warmed up? We will have a loose clothing drop. We typically do this at all of our events. So at your first aid station, which is about mile three, that is where we will have a loose clothing. So what's going to happen is we'll either have a truck out there ready to go or a series of receptacle bins, and you're going to toss your clothing in there. And as soon as everybody passes that point, they will bring that to the finish line and it will simply be dumped on a tarp. So we'll kind of spread things out, but it's up to you to go through and pick through and get retrieve your clothing. So yeah. again, maybe don't put your favorite jacket in there. Right. Maybe like one of those I could I could be okay with losing if a this type got of jacket. donated to the shelter. However, it'd be fine. <laughs> we again we don't we don't purposely lose anything or steal anything. We'll make sure to get that pile of clothing to the finish line for you. Yeah. So if you can use that loose clothing. And remember it's not at the mile three flag. It is at the aid station. Correct. So no matter what your GPS says, no matter like when you get to three, don't just start throwing yeah. things into the desert. There's enough garbage in the desert and it doesn't need any more and those prickly pants pick up everything. If there's anything discarded before or after that point at the first aid station, it'll just be considered trash yeah. and it'll just go, it will not be brought yeah, back. Yeah, so you've got one chance to ditch your clothing. Other than that, you know, tie things to your waist or put it in your pack if you really want to hang on to it to the finish. And speaking of aid stations, you talked about the first aid station coming around mile three. We've got six total aid mm-hmm. stations out there. All of them cup free. Yes, they will be cup free. So when you come to the expo, when you registered for the race, you indicated if you wanted a hydro pouch. And this is a little cup that we give you. It's kind of a flat shaped cup that it's used to get the fluids at the aid stations. You don't have to use that cup. You can bring your own cup or if you are more comfortable carrying a water bottle like a handheld or a running pack with a hydration bladder, anything you want, or it's a waist belt, it's up to you. But keep in mind, there will be no cups on course. We will have eight stations at miles three, five, seven, nine, eleven, and twelve. And those are rough estimates. It's plus or minus a yeah, you know a, a decimal bit. of a mile there. Yeah. But each of those eight stations are going to have water and gnarly hydrate, which is gnarly is our sponsor. They're an excellent product. I yeah. love their electrolyte drink. It's great. We're going to have probably ruby red grapefruit or orange pineapple as far as okay. the flavors out on course. And then honey stinger gels will be the energy gel that will be supplied at the aid stations as well. Okay. So every aid station will have honey stinger gel. Okay. And bathrooms. Yes. Bathrooms too. Do not forget that. Everybody always worries about the bathrooms. Yeah. Bathrooms at every single aid station. So you're going to be really well cared for out there. You're going to be taken care of. Don't worry about that. Free race photos coming your way. You can use the Race Joy app to have a fun little racing running tour guide with you. And also when you're in Joshua Tree, we want you to go and explore. Mm -hmm. We want you to go and see this place. We we bring you to these places in order for you to go and see what is unique about this place and experience a national park. So we have a great new app that we've been using this year called the Spark Challenges app. And you can become a Joshua Tree Explorer Club member. That's right. So we've launched this actually last year, and at every event, we give on the app, um, there's a little icon for every single location that we have races at. And you can do this anytime when you visit a national park, but we've got a whole list of activities, um, educational stewardship and service opportunities, and even recommendations such as places to eat or snacks to get in the nearby area. So it's not just the park alone, but the surrounding areas, whether it's a a town or another cool state park nearby, depends on each location. But we've got a whole list of things and activities to do. Each of them have point values tied to the activity. And then what you do is go on the app and check off certain things you've done. And if you reach a certain threshold of points that you've earned, you will earn yourself an Explorer badge. Cool. And it's like this little wooden badge. Free of charge. We'll just send it out to you once you reach that and earn your goal. Awesome. That's it's kind of neat. I saw some people posting on our Friends of Vacation Races posts of their their badges that they have. The badges have been a couple of different sizes this year, but that's just because they got too big. Yeah. <laughs> they looked a little weird and you weren't able to use them. Yeah, they for kind things. of they kind of were like pinning a metal onto your backpack. <laughs> right. And they're a little big, in my opinion. I know some people like the large ones, and I'm sorry that that was your taste, but we've downsized them a little and we'll be streamlining them to be that 
smaller yeah. size, but they still are a good size. No, like, they're they're like an nice. inch and a half or yeah. something like that. But the other ones were just too big. They're a little flavor flavor as far as <laughs> size goes. Like if you wanted to put them on, on a hat or something, you'd be like, okay, this is a little large. So <laughs> we, we're trying to dial in exactly their size, but it's free swag. It's yep. it's free to use the Spark Challenges app. So make sure to dig into that if you're going to be in the area for a little while so that you can check it out. And all of our club hikes, if you've run with, run with us before, you might remember our club hikes and our trifecta activities. Those are all included within the Spark Challenges app, and it goes towards your Joshua Tree Explorer Club. Yep. So pretty easy. And we just have so much fun. This is really our final event of 2021, mm-hmm. Anna. It's been a big year. It has been a big and busy oh, and exciting year. Like We've had been. fantastic runners come join us at all the events so far, and yeah. I'm just excited for this final one because... There's going to be so many of us there and it's always a party in the dark in the desert. Yeah, it really is. My husband, he does all the sound and all the lighting. And last time we were there in 2019, he had like flamethrowers. They have fog machines. They bring laser lights, all really fun stuff just to make it. It's kind of like a club atmosphere. So we kind of have a big party. So get ready for that. It's going to be great. Of course, we'll have our award ceremony right there on location. So if you win an award overall or Masters or age group will be doing those at about 9 p.m., but it's just going to be a party in the desert. I mean, is there anything else? This is pretty straightforward. I think the biggest thing is get parked early. Yep. There is one major thing that I failed to mention, but it's actually really important. I cannot stress enough. Headlamps or a flashlight oh, of some sort. Oh, how did we forget that? Is Anna? required. I know we should have. We should have actually started with this. I think we should have. <laughs> My gosh, this is so a nighttime. This run. is a night race. Hence, hence, uh, even though it doesn't have like Zion at night, we say at night. This is technically Joshua Tree at night. It is. So yeah. the race starts at six p.m. That means the sun will have set or just starting to set. Yep. So everybody, everybody, everybody will be running in the dark. And we will have lights, which we call bubble lights, set up at the aid station so the workers can see to mix gnarly for you and make sure things right. are laid out on the table. But from point to point between each aid station, there are not lights. No. We'll have some reflective tape um, markers, little reflective taping that's clipped onto some bushes on occasion. And for sure, at every major turn, we will have reflective arrows and lights and things to make sure you don't miss those key turns. However... Be on the lookout, you know, be in charge of your own race and make sure you don't miss those turns. But the key thing is you must have a light with you. And it's always good to pack extra batteries in case that fails on you. Yeah. And I have to give a shout out for my favorite waist lamp. And you have one as well. The Ultra Spire Lumen. My gosh, these lights, lights have come so far. We're just mentioning one that, that Ann and Again, I, not sponsored, not sponsored, but Ann and I have to happen to have that waist lamp and Kogala has some really bright mm-hmm. lights that they have these days. I mean, there are some amazing lighting systems out there. So get a good light. It makes, yeah. it's really, truly the difference between a really fun night race and being like, oh my gosh, my headlamp from Walmart just isn't cutting it. Right. <laughs> so have a good light. It really goes a yep. long way. Have a good light. I mean, dress up, wear some fun, yeah. you know, some glow sticks, something sparkly something lighting. Yeah. yeah. Have people, fun with it. People come with like the tutus that have like the LED lights yeah. in them and the hats with LED lights. It's really fun. You can really go all out if you want to or don't. It doesn't really matter. That's what's great about this event is you can make it as fun as you want, but you have to have a light. Right. Is it a requirement? Like It is. Okay. It's a requirement. We put that on our website. I think I want to say we make you check a box when you registered saying, I realize I am required to bring a light. So okay. please bring a headlamp, a flashlight, something. I would not rely on your phone. Let's let's make your phone be the backup. Yes. Not your primary source yes. of light. Because it drains the battery really yeah. fast. Yep. So plan on a headlamp. Um, I believe we're going to have, a, we'll have batteries for sale at our merchandise in case you need to pick up a few spare ones. But um Bring your own light and be ready to go for this race. How did we almost forget to talk about lighting? We just got too excited about everything else. I guess so. Lights are like the most important. Be early for parking (laughs) and make sure you have your lights with you. We should have. Yeah. We should have started with that. My gosh. Well, that's okay. I'm glad we got it out. And you guys know what's going to go on. We're going to have a party in the desert, vacation races style. This is actually a really unique place where we're at where they do tons of music festivals Mm -hmm. and probably raging parties and stuff like that in Joshua Tree. And so we get to be there that we're going to just take over this whole area and have our own kind of running party. So we're excited to have all 3,300 of you guys 
first weekend of November. If you have any questions, Anna, what's your email that they can reach out to? My email is Anna, spelled A-N-N-A, at vacationraises.com. Okay, super easy. We'd love to hear from you if you have any questions. And also, our Vacation Races and Friends uh, Facebook page is a really great resource as well because that's where runners talk about things and can give you good suggestions. But until then, we are excited to see you in Joshua Tree. Thanks for joining us, guys. You've been listening to the Vacation Races and Friends podcast. We'd love your feedback. Email podcast at vacationraces.com with comments, concerns, or stories you'd love to share. Make sure to watch for more episodes coming soon to vacationraces.com. This episode was produced by Colleen Rue in the Festival Sound Studio. For information about music licensing, contact Dane at vacationraces.com.